Jesus. Should I try this one more time? What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose a starter solenoid. This goes for a couple different vehicles. Today we're going to be working on a Ford. This is similar from anything back from the 50s all the way to let's say 1990s. So we've got a big range here to work with. Um, I'll show you the symptoms in a minute. Today we're going to just be using some simple tools. Use a voltmeter, a test light, or if you're a baller like me, I'm going to be using my snap-on lab scope. Vantage, son. This dates back to 1997, I think. Or 2000. Who knows? It's old school. So here we are. This is a 66 Mercury Ford motor. Um, what is a starter solenoid? Starter solenoid, this guy right here. If you got a Chevy, it's on the starter. Normally, you're going to have to re you're going to have to do change the whole starter out. Um, Ford, it's a good thing that they did for once. Finally, they put an external solenoid. And this right here is kind of like a relay. Um, we'll go over this real quick for you guys that aren't too sure. You guys that know what I'm talking about, skip ahead. We got your battery, your positive, negative, negative. Just ground the positive goes to it. And then you see the other big gauge wire. Remember, look at the gauge of the thickness. Other big gauge wire is going to go desk down to the starter. So once this thing gets power, the starter is going to turn on. And once it stops getting power, it's going to quit feeding power to the starter. That is all done through the key signal. So we have an S for the starter. Well, that's when the key's in the fully starting position before you let go. And the other one's for ignition. So one energizes it, and then the one in start's going to keep it uh, in there. The eye also goes to the ignition, to the coil. We'll talk about the coil in a second. I'm going to go hook up my leads. I'm going to hook up every meter, actually, and show you guys how to diagnose if this guy's bad. Okay, well, this just scared the dog shit out of me. So, as you see, my negative terminal is not hooked up right now. Hopefully, I'm in frame. I got my test meter on. Ignore the lab scope. We got power going to the big positive post, but you can see we already got power going on there on the starter side. So what's happening, we got power going, feeding into the solenoid. There's gotta be an internal short that is shorting right through. So every terminal right now is hot. That means my key one's hot and then my ignition's hot. So if I hook up this cable, we might have an accident here. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is gonna get quite sketchy here, boys. Do it for the YouTube. Thumbs up if I did this for the YouTube. <laughs> Jesus. Should I try this one more time? Jeez, oh yeah, no. Oh. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so according to the lab scope here, if it focuses, let me turn on the backlight. Hopefully you guys see it. We got a full 12 volts, it's with the uh, lab scope on the starter side and then the other side on the ground as you can see the battery is unhooked right now because we had that little spark show but this shows that this thing is internally shorted right across the starter is always going to be running when I hook this battery so this guy gotta go okay to the parts bench thank you that we got a new one here at the parts store let's do the test where is she from China obviously all right, I'm going to switch this guy off camera real quick. I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you how to scope it afterwards. Make sure you disconnect the negative terminal when you guys do this. I'll be back in a minute. There she is before we switch it out. Bam, she's installed. Okay, let's hook up that battery cable. and Hopefully we don't get shocked this time. Moment of truth, guys. Yeah, we fine. We fine. Yeah, let's see if she starts. Cold crank. Let's get it. Okay, so this is an example of a Ford style starting system with the solenoid that's remotely mounted on, let's say, the fender, inner fender. 
If it's a Chevy, let's say they'll have the solenoid built onto the starter. In that case, I don't think that you could buy the solenoid separate. So you'll have to change the starter out with it. Um, I'll go over the distributor stuff here in a minute. Like we are saying, the uh, starter solenoid, that's this gray box right here. It's got the two big terminals, the big gauge wires marked in red. This is a load side. So this is what it's going to be controlling because it's a heavier gauge. So a key switch by itself, let's say like a, or like a light switch. If we put a light switch in here or a small switch, we'll end up burning that contact. That's why we use a solenoid here instead. The way the solenoid is activated is by the ignition and the start. That's all done through the key here. As you can see what I did here, this is just extra if you guys want to know here, there's an ignition and that is uh, shared when the key is on in the running position. That powers up the ignition coil and that's what fires the distributor. This right here, when the key's off, it should be about six volts, even though the car is a 12 volt car. The coil is going to be operating at a lower voltage because this one uses a point style distributor. A point style distributor requires lower voltage because a higher voltage will burn out the contacts sooner. And these things have a problem with the contacts burning out. So it'll have six volts here. The reason it's tied into the starter solenoid is when you want to crank it over, the 12 volts for that split second when you when it's cranking it'll supply 12 volts to the ignition to the coil so it'll just have a little bit more juice to fire that coil because once the car is cranking you'll see the voltage of the battery drop from 12 volts to around 10 volts 9 volts and if you're getting that type of drop at the battery you're going to be seeing that type of drop at the coil let's say 3 volts uh, give or take and in that case it's going to have a weak spark on startup and that's where you don't want it because you need it to kick over and fire. So with that being said, thanks for watching guys. If this video helped you out, or at least you learned something, drop it a like, that helps me out. If you want to consider subscribing, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and hopefully you guys learned something by this.